Hi, my name is Dan Siegel, and it's an honor to be with you today to explore the notion of awareness and how the experience we have of being conscious of our experience of self, our experience of the world, actually can transform what we can simply call our identity. Now, why would this be important for a time when we're all thinking of reflecting, of meditating together to explore how we can bring changes into the worlds in which we live, the larger national scene we have, the international scene, the ecological system in which we live, the local communities we live in, the families we live in, even the bodies we live in, our individual inner sense. Well, we're at this moment in the evolution of humanity that we've come to a time when some people call this the Anthropocene era. This is an era when human beings, our species, has been transforming the climate, has been changing the conditions in which all other living beings live. Now, this important moment in the evolution of life on Earth means that we humans have an opportunity that is a challenge to say the way we're living may need to have a nudge in a different direction. And part of what we can see, if you look at the work of E.O. Wilson in a beautiful book called The Meaning of Human Existence, we see that we have evolved with some very special characteristics. One of them is the characteristic that we use the visual channel of communicating what we do with our eyes and the energy form called light, and the auditory channel, what we do with our ears in terms of hearing, and how we use the movement of air molecules as the form of energy to connect with one another. Now, while you're familiar with sight and sound, what you may not realize is that most of the living beings on Earth communicate in much more subtle ways. For example, pheromones that are the chemical messengers that interconnect us all. Now, from a biological point of view, Wilson says that we are sensory cripples, that we actually have incredibly limited capacities to sense the interconnections in the world. That biological view that what we sense and therefore perceive is actually quite limited, allows us to experience a sense of self that is quite separate from the world around us. And so we can build factories that churn out products that we sell because we envision this is all about how much money I can make or how much stuff I can produce or consume. And then we treat the world around the factory and the world in which we all live as a trash can. So this separate self from a biological point of view is threatening life on Earth because, as Wilson says, the numbers of human beings has gone from the small amount we used to be where this kind of attitude of being separate from others, other living beings, has had a large margin of error where you could do things that didn't really matter and then move on to the next spot now we've become so huge in our numbers that there is no more room for error, that we have to very carefully consider how this separate sense of identity is actually killing the planet. Now, at the same time, consilience is a term Wilson uses for independent findings from independent pursuits. And if you look at the pursuit of physics, we've now come to realize as a scientific fact that the one reality we all live in is actually comprised of two, at least, realms. One realm is what Sir Isaac Newton discovered, which was the realm of large objects. And so classical physics, also called Newtonian physics, is a macro state pers perspective on the world where things are like nouns and as if they're separate entities, like that car honking out there. There's a car there, there's a body here, a camera here, and that's it. This noun way of living as if we're separate entities also has an arrow of time, a directionality to it. 
And what we know now, for the last roughly around 100 years, is there's another realm beneath this macrostate world, a world that Newton studied. And in fact, I went to do a meditation at Sir Isaac Newton's house with Sue Cooper's invitation. And what we were able to do was explore how you can see around this apple tree where Newton figured out gravity, but also in doing the wheel of awareness practice where you put the experience of what you're aware of on the rim, these macro states that have a noun-like quality of a thought here or a perception there, but you drop into the hub of pure awareness and you start experiencing a different quality of being. And this correlates with the physics realm called the quantum realm, which emerges from microstates like an electron or a photon. Here there is no directionality of change called the arrow of time. And here we drop into the reality that events happen, not entities, that life is more experienced in terms of the nature of reality as verbs rather than nouns and there's deep interconnection rather than separation. So when you do the Wheel of Awareness practice, or perhaps many of the different meditative practices from traditions from long ago, the Wheel is simply a way to integrate consciousness that's inspired by deep scientific reasoning that says when you link differentiated elements of a system, you create well-being, and if you're going to integrate the fundamental way we create change, which is with consciousness. When you integrate consciousness, you can take the differentiated knowing, place it in the hub, the differentiated knowns, place it on the rim, and then move this spoke of attention around. And at some point, you explore all the different elements of the rim, but then you bend the spoke around or retract the spoke or just drop the spoke and just rest in the hub and you experience this timeless sense, this eternity, this sense of infinity, this emptiness but fullness. For some it's God, for others it's love. It's a deep sense of interconnection. And after doing this systematically with 10,000 people in a study and now 45,000 people in person, hearing for those who take a microphone report it, that three things often are woven together in the pure awareness of the hub of the wheel and they are awareness, the sense of knowing, interconnection, this realization that we are verbs deeply interconnected as unfolding emerging events, and love, that love, interconnection, and awareness are woven from the same, same strand. And so as we meditate together in whatever process of meditation we can do, if you're doing the wheel, we can use the terminology of the hub and look at the deep mechanism, which we describe as a plane of possibility, a generator of diversity corresponding to the sea of potential, the quantum vacuum. And that when we drop into this plane of possibility, this G-O-D, this generator of diversity, we come to realize how deeply interconnected we are with all living beings. And thank you for joining in this discussion of the nature of consciousness and our experience of interconnection and love with one another.